that is just us doing our makeup check. Yes. Welcome <laughs> to Living With Us. Living With Us. We're hoping for a sponsorship soon. Um, yes, we we always hold on to hope. Yeah. Um, but down to business. We've got our greeting through. And we've been thinking about a favorite author thinker of Ayanda's. Yes. Um, a man named C.S. Lewis. And I wanted to ask her some questions um, so that we could hear about yeah, if she really does um, like and respect his thinking and writing, literature, I don't know what else you tell us, um, and what is it about him that inspires you? Yeah, yeah. Um, Clive Staples, I know some of you maybe just think his name is CS, but uh, yeah, I found out it was Clive Staples. I only found that out like... Two years ago, maybe. Okay. If that. Mm. It might have been more recently. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, um, what I like about him. So I I think all of us kind of like vaguely have heard of like the Narnia series or a lot of people have. Um, and we did the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe in primary school and that was cool. But I wasn't much of a reader um, back then. But actually in the last like, yeah, say two years of varsity, I've really um, gotten into um, his work. And it was actually very encouraging um, reading, um, especially more of his apologetic um, writing. So I read The Problem of Pain, which is a really great book on like suffering and thinking through suffering, like why there's suffering in the world, why we should care about suffering um, in the world. And that was also just like super helpful in terms of like the way he argues. He argues really mm. persuasively like, yo. Um, so I it helped me with my master's as well, kind of like realizing like it can ma- it can make sense in your head why a particular argument is good, but being able to lay it out for someone else to understand that that takes a, a bit more work and um, yeah, just reading some of his work really helped me. Um, but yeah, but w- my favorite thing kind of across the board with all with all the C.S. Lewis books I've read and I haven't read nearly enough, but still um, keen for yeah to read um, quite a few more. Um, but my favorite thing across the board with with his books is how he how he thinks about imagination like I think a lot of people often think about imagination as this play thing which is it's great it's it's a um it's really cool where we get to think up like new worlds or like you know like we think about this world and maybe like with with things magnified like not just a normal horse a flying horse or Mm -hmm. um you know whatever um but how like he's been able to take imagination and connect that with um some like and and like make us realize that it's it's something that is god given and Mm -hmm. that it's there to in as as with everything in our lives to in some way like honor or glorify the lord um and particularly with imagination i think um (laughs) sorry i just disrupted our camera um with imagination something um that i enjoyed is that he he kind of takes it a step further and and he um uses it like to help us imagine kind of like the kingdom of god and that was particularly like i think with um uh, with Till We Have Faces when I read that that was like a really I think it's my favourite C.S. Lewis book um, so far as Till We Have Faces um, is because the thing is with the kingdom of God we can't currently like see it now like yeah. you know and, and with a lot of things in the kingdom they're invisible and, and in the scripture it says you know the things um, that are visible or temporal um, but the things that are unseen are eternal yeah. and, and, and so there's often a lot of these things where we know Jesus is risen we know he's seated in you know in heavenly places and like but we can't see those things with our eyes but um, like by faith we believe that those you know um, that that is the reality and mm-hmm. so what he does until we have faces is he like I think for the first time like it really like encouraged me to see that although we can't see the kingdom of God it's more real than this reality even yes. um, like and and one of the lines that he has is, is he says you know for now we dream longing to be awake and kind of like thinking of this life as a dream compared to like our true life mm-hmm. that we'll come into when we die and we um or when the Lord resurrects us um, one day. And so that's, that's I think, been, like, one of my favorite, like, things about C.S. Lewis is how he's used imagination to really, like, put across this point that the kingdom of God is more real than, than this world, um, even though for now it seems like something we can only imagine, but to kind of leverage our imaginations to, with faith, <laughs> yeah. like, um, really have eyes to see this yeah. kingdom that is larger than all the kingdoms of the earth, more glorious than all the kingdoms of the earth. Um, and I think he, yeah, he really, like, had eyes for that. Like, he, yeah, as, I mean, obviously he never met him, but uh, through his writing, I can just see, like, that to him was more real, like, than anything else. And that really comes true in his, like, or comes through um, in his writing that, like, God's ways, what God has said, that's more true than the things we see, the things we feel, um, and so yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah. And so that's really um, something I've loved and been encouraged by in C.S. Lewis's 
writings and why he is um, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, um, writer, Christian Young. Yeah. Christian Young. Yeah. That is amazing. It makes me think of a, a saying of mine I used to like in high school. I still, it's not a saying of mine, a saying I used to like. Yes. Um, and I had a t-shirt that said, keep it real. <laughs> and I'm like, it's funny because C.S. Lewis like, keeps it real mm. by thinking of that which is so real that it seems unreal. Mm. Mm. Exactly. So, exactly. Very cool. Thank yeah. you for sharing. For sure. For Goodbye, sure. friends. Until next time.